recording. Excellent. So thank you everyone for joining. This is the second workshop. Last night we ran the one which was on the website, super forms, online registrations and super CRM. So it really was a whiz through all of the things that are available. Um, I'm on the mynetball.co.nz page, and this is going to be the area where we're going to have um, support. We've already got some things with FAQs for the centres. We're going to have some specific information to really try and help you kind of find your way um, for those new centres, particularly that are coming across um, to sporting, which is great to have you. I know that some of the centres have already been using Sporty and are looking to now use things like uh, SCED and the Game Day Scoring app. And so and there'll be different levels of people using different things. Um, so kickoff is, I'm going to go through to a couple of places as well, is just to sort of show you we have our main online support site. So this is important for everything to do with Sporty. We have a specific section in here <coughs> that is to do with SCED. And I just wanted to come in here initially and, and show you this because there's lots and lots of things that you can do in SCED and there's a lot of detail and many things some <coughs> of the centers won't be doing or won't be using. But we've got, if I click through and go show you the detail and the level of um, the number of different articles and the different sections that we've got, all of these sort of different things that are covered. So in relation to more specific things of tournaments, our standings table, um, FAQs, um, and you can see the number of articles that we've actually um, got that are in here in different things. So if you come into one of these articles, it should have <coughs> information and screenshots. One thing just to be um, aware of as well in relation to our online support is SCED is provided to a number of codes. So we work with rugby and netball and rugby league, softball, touch um, and hockey, uh, some of the organisations that use SCED. So some of the terminology in some cases, it might be referees instead of umpires. We try to keep it as generic and consistent as, as possible, but just to sort of let you know uh, that side of things. So I guess um, the starting point, if I come back to my um, trusty ABC Netball Centre site, is sort of the process flow of how things get set up in the first place. So there will be a super form that we that drives um, the entry of your teams. So first of all, we'll be we'll be requesting from the centres for the new centres. First of all, the list of any of your affiliated clubs and schools, because what we do in our back end is we map them to your centre so that when they add their teams and their player details, it automatically feeds through. At any stage during the season, if you do have new clubs and schools coming on board, let us know and we then add them to your organisation so that they you'll see them. Um, as part of the Superform setup as well, we also initially get your list of grades. And so these are the grades that your clubs and schools will be entering their teams into. And we'll cover those. Um, the other thing that we'll also get as part of the setup is we'll ask for, um, we have a, a SCED template document, which is where we request a list of your grades and all of the um, grade defaults. So for example, um, the grade names and the, the, the times and um, the points templates and things like that. So we'll be um, getting that information from you as well. So I guess the starting point um, is we've set up your, so we'll work on the basis that we know who your clubs and schools are, we know who your grades are, we've set up the super form and you've communicated to your clubs and schools, we're ready to start taking registrations. I guess what typically happens is the clubs and schools themselves will be taking their own player registrations as they're starting to do things like um, sort out trialling teams. So they're wanting to know who those players are, where they want to play and how they can put them into teams. But they also have a, will have a fair idea of what the number of teams that they want to be entering in the competition. So that's kind of the, the, 
the starting point for your clubs and schools is that they will go into their area of team builder and they will start adding their, um, their teams into the competition. And I'll just pop back to this page, example of a page here. So for each netball centre, we'll set up this registration process page which is designed for your clubs and schools. I know I talked about this last night as well, but it's, it's designed to sort of explain to them the process flow for what they will be doing, that they'll have their own area on Sporty, that they go and add their teams and add their players. There'll be some user guides and video tutorials um, that they can follow there as well. So what on the basis that that has happened, we'll now come into our ABC Network Centre and we'll go into SCED and start going through SCED and how it can operate. So first thing is what we will do with you is to help you with the setup is we will set up in this area called organization settings. And I just wanna run through this area. So this can be changed and modified over time but initially we will go and help put this populate to this area for you. So as part of our, when we want to understand what your defaults are for all of, uh, for your setup of SCED, we will understand things like your locations and venues. So in this example here, we've got three venues and within those venues, we can see the number of courts that are set within each venue. So if I click into this here, it shows the number of courts. Obviously, some of the larger centres are going to have 20 or 30 courts that sit in here. So it just sits in here as um, a bottomless cup of the centres, the uh, courts that are in there. Some organised, some centres might just have one venue. Some might have many venues that can be set in here. They will be configured in here. That's the locations and venue tab. Then this is the grade defaults. Um, this example, we've just got three grades that are set up. A lot of you will have obviously a lot more grades that set up in here, but we come and plug in for you here things like your total grade duration, your preferred venues. So for example, if I come in here, I can see this has got um, one location and three venues, and it shows that for my premier woman grade, we're going to, wherever possible, populate them at the ABC Sports Centre on courts one, two, and three. And so this is the priority of how it's going to populate where these teams are played. So this is their preferred venues. And you, we can configure these here. When we're actually creating the competition, these venues can be changed. This is just the system default of typically what you're going to have. Venue size, this is important. When for more of your junior grades and your future firms where you're putting um, more games on one court, lets you configure and do that. Uh, preferred times, you can come in here and say your preferred times that they will be, um, that they'll be played. Um, it's a matter of, it, times can be changed and added in here. Um, show and ladder, so for some of the, um, Junior grades, they won't be tipped on to show and letter, and but by default for these senior comps, they all are. Um, points templates. So we, we have a whole lot of points templates that are already in here. As part of our setup with you, if your points template is not in here, we'll work with you to get it added so it, that's included in here. Um, the ladder ca calculation, whether you're using um, differential and um, or percentage, and then there's an advanced options where we can set some more things like um, if games are defaulted, if points are automatically added. Um, and also you can set um, teams, default teams per draw. Kind of like last night, I'm sort of whizzing through some of these areas and it is in your help. And as draws administrators, these are probably things that you're familiar with and your setup that you'll have as well. But um, these are the kind of questions that you can ask us if you have any. Um, venue blackouts. So this is kind of cool. So this, you can add venue blackouts going out into the future. And what it's basically saying is that this court at um, venue ABC, court two, is going to be unavailable um, on the 3rd of December between 8 and 12. So you can have a whole lot of venue blackouts added in there for things like court repairs or whatever. So that, that stops it appearing in there. 
um, officials. So we're going to be actually pulling your um, umpires will be registered on an official's form that will come through and be visible to you in uh, SCED. We'll show you that in a minute when we go through to that. And these are your organisations that are in effect going to be mapped to you. So when we configure all your clubs and schools, you'll see them in here. And it gives you the ability to actually apply how they want to be displayed. So some of the clubs could be very long, you know, um, Eastern Netball, Rugby and Sports Club Incorporated, as a, for example, so you can actually give um, an abbreviated name here. So this, um, oops, sorry, this is area here is your organisation settings. Kind of get set up once and gets set and forget, and that's, that doesn't need to, you don't need to kind of worry about it. We will help you do it, and then it can be um, changed going forward if you need to. Um, so, so yeah, the only place that you'll really be going into during the season in that area um, would be your venue blackouts as you as you need to get them there. Good call. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got a couple of competitions already set up, but how you would add a competition is, is clicking on this add a competition, and a competition is driven by um, a form that so and your winter comp, it will be your netball registration form, and you can pick which grades that you want to add into that uh, competition. So from this drop down here, I'm actually going to go through into a couple of competitions that I've got. I've got one um, that just to kind of give you a bit of a higher level overview of sort of how SCED can be set up, and that we've already got some different phases that are set up here, for example, a round robin, We've applied seeding, so these are seeding numbers to some of our grades. We've got a crossover round that appears in here, and we've got a playoffs round. So this was just to sort of show you a, a format of probably a more typical um, tournament you have. So you will end up with phases, um, multiple phases for your competitions that you run in here. Um, so I'm going to go into... Um, my another one here that we've got called season competition and I just want to go back a little step from here and show the connection between how these teams actually appeared in here so I'm going to jump back out of my ABC netball center and I'm going to go into a club that we went into last night so this is Maris netball it's one of the clubs that are affiliated or mapped through to ABC Netball Centre. So Maris Netball will be busily in the online registrations area, having their players register through the online registration form. So they've either added that registration form to their website, or they've copied a link and sent a link out to their members to register. And we'll see in here all their members that will be starting to be registered. At the same time, uh, Maris Netball will also be coming into Team Builder and adding their teams. So when uh, they come into here, the reason that they see these three grades here, are uh, these are the grades that are added on the super form for the Netball Centre. So what they see down the left-hand side is as their players are registering, they are all appearing in here. And in this area here, this is where they go to add teams. So early on in the season, they may have players here and no teams added. Um, and over time, once they add their teams and configure who players are players into their teams, they will then use the process of dragging and dropping their players into these teams and populating both their teams and their players. That then, the step of that, is that what flows through into the game day app. And that's why they can see their players um, in the game day app is because they've been dragged and dropped into their teams and team builder here. But we're going to come on to the game day app afterwards. But what I wanted to show was in ABC Netball, we've got these teams that all appear in team builder. Just for the purpose of this, I'm just going to add another team in here. And I'm just going to save and close. So in ABC Netball, I've gone and added my team in here called Test Team. And 
I'm going to hop out of here. I'm going to go out of ABC, out of Maris Netball, and back into ABC Netball Centre. Back instead into my season comp. Oh, and I need to, that's actually not, I'm just going to go back and add it into a grade that is in that competition. I'd added it into the collegiate grade, my test team, and into that competition, I only had my premier and senior. So I'm just going to show you, this is how teams can be moved around in Team Builder. So I'm actually at the club level. So I'm, I'm back and I've got club administrator hat on. I've just gone and dragged and dropped my team into that grade there. So the actions that the, the club administrators take within their team builder automatically um, reflects into schedule up until the point to, in which you add their team into a drawer. At that stage, um, the team is effectively locked into the drawer that you've created it into in the grade it's been created in. So what I just wanted to show, we've now got a team called Maris One Test here. So it shows the club that it's come from and where it's, where it's added in here. So. At the beginning, when um, you would first come into SCED, you would have all of your teams sitting here on the left hand side as they are added into their grades by your clubs and schools and their own version of team builder. Um, what we've done here is we've already started to create a competition, but your, your starting point is you'll start to see your teams added. All of your clubs and schools have their own logo. It's really easy to identify which club and school that they come from by their little logo that appears there. So this is something, those logos also appear against clubs and schools in the drawer. So it's that nice visual identifier. Um, jo, I've just had a couple of questions in the chat um, around, as a centre, can they regrade teams? Um, so whether we can show them about the dragging and dropping um, and also talking about closing grades. So. Absolutely. So while Maris put themselves in Premier One, um, from the centre's perspective, it may be, well, actually, they're getting a little bit ahead of themselves. They're not in Premier One. They're actually in Senior One. So from SCED, you can drag and drop and pull them down into this grade here. And sometimes when you set up your grades at the beginning of the year, you might have five collegiate grades, you know, collegiate A, B, C, D, E. Realise you actually don't get many, entered, many teams entered um, in collegiate E. So those that are, you could drag them off up into A, B, C or D and not use that grade. So yes, you as the centre control the shots here and you can move those teams around. Just to actually show you that, I'm just going to pop back into trusty Maris Netball and we'll see in here, it's moved our team into the senior grade here. So that's just to show you how, how that happens. Cutoff date is really relevant. And this is something that you will do. And you have two more important, two important cutoff dates. First cutoff date is the date by which the teams can be um, entered into your competition and moved around. So how you set that is in here, there is an area a hyperlink for closing dates. So at the moment, we've got no closing dates for team entry. And this is the kind of thing our scheme support would work with you on as well. If we see you're, um, you know, you're about to go and do your draw and you don't have any closing dates, we want you to set closing dates and we'll help set closing dates so that teams can't continue to be added and scared. So you simply come in here and it's a date picker and picking the date that you want the closing dates to be entered. So that's, that's typically something that you would have at the beginning of the season. You have a rough idea of when your closing dates are. At any stage, you as the SCED administrator can come in and change these closing dates if you want to kick them out a week and let people add teams. So you've also got the ability to set maximum, maximum number of teams as well. And what this does is if you have, say, 12 prem teams that are going to be entered, as clubs and schools are entering teams into that grade, once the maximum has been reached, 
they will get a pop-up saying maximum is being reached, you, you're unable to enter teams. And then presumably they would come through to the centre to talk to you about that. So in this case, what we've done is we've gone and added a closing date. Um, once the closing date has been released, being set for team entry, your clubs and schools can't go and drag and drop their teams around. They can't edit a team to go and change the name or change the grade or anything like that. What they can do is they can continue to put players into their teams because often you want to confirm what the um, when you want to start doing your draw. You want to close off the team entries, but the players mightn't have been finalised. So there'll be a lot of dragging and dropping of players around in their teams um, up until that date. So that was just um, setting your closing dates of your teams. After the teams have closed off, you as a skilled administrator can actually go in and add a team directly into a club's um, team builder. So you have the ability here to go and add a team and any, um, into the competition. So in this case, I'm going to select all of the organisations that are mapped to me. Let's just choose um, Maris Netball. And um, you can go and add a team. So I've gone and added a team in there. And if I went back into Maris Netball, that team's been added to their team builder. So the club and school can't add their team, but you can add their team um, to that side of it. So in this example here, um, so other things that you can do within here is you can have seeding against um, add seedings to teams. You can also do things like you can add particular team preferences. So team A uh, might they may live rurally and say we can't play before five o'clock. And so what you can do is you can when you actually go and add it add them to a drawer, it will come up as a pop up and show you an alert that they have been added into the draw when it's not a time that suits them. So you can then go and change how their preferences with that. Is that kind of answering your question on the chat? Or is yeah, yeah, kind of you're doing practicing. a really good job. I don't, um, I don't know how you're keeping up with the team without seeing it. But I've, I've heard you talk about um, uh, preventing people from uh, registering for grades, which is great. <laughs> um, so what we, we're in, so there's three phases. Three areas in um, SCED. There's a competition builder. In that area, we're building the competition, we're generating the draw, we're publishing the draw, um, all happens in this competition builder area. We've got these two kind of windows here at the moment. They're both reflecting exactly the same thing. Um, they're just using, we're, we're having them displaying them in different ways. So we've got this area, which is called um, our schedule and our venue view. And I'm just going to click on this little area here and show you how it looks in um, our venue view. I'm just going to go in and change the time. So I know you've got it around here. So you'll see in a lot of places, there's these areas that you can click into, go and change your dates, change your times. You can specify whether you want to see all grades or just one grade, particular venues, all these different options that are available. So this is showing me in the schedule view um, how my teams look. But I'm just going to click into um, my venue view because this is a really awesome view of how you can look at things. So I don't know if you remember back up in our org settings, we had that this court was under repair and that's why it's got a blackout on it. So we can't put anything in here. We so so just to, just to take that point a little bit further, um, when Jo mentions we can't put anything there, um, and she'll talk in a moment about dragging and dropping fixtures, but where we have a venue blackout, when you go to generate a drawer, even if for the premier grade, you had said that their preference was to play on court two, um, when SCED attempts to generate the drawer, it looks for available venues, and where it sees a blackout, it won't apply any fixtures to that venue. So even though in this particular example, you'd see that Premier 2 it always has to play on court 2. They can't play on any other court. When SCED attempts to generate the draw, for this date, it would state that there are no venues available based on uh, your recommended venues for that grade because that court is actually under repair at the moment. So you could then subsequently uh, um, move those games on that date to a different venue. So this is a great visual in indicator. Um, in this case, we've only got two grades. You're going to have a lot more grades in here but it shows colour-wise what the different grades are. Um, these two 
teams here, um, if you can see, there's an, a red line around both of these teams here. When I hover my mouse over it, it tells me that there's a conflict. So if you can read that, it's saying that um, Bulldog Senior A does not want to play at the same time as Suburbs Netball. So it's telling me visually that there's a conflict and then I can decide whether to do something or not with it. So while we've plugged in um, previously what our team conflicts are, it's not stopping you adding it into the draw, but it's a visual indicator, something's not right here and you can go and change it. You can um, decide what you want to do. Um, so one of the things that we can do here is that we can see that we've got um, some teams that are here. The great thing with the venue view is it gives you the ability to click on a team and you can drag and drop your teams around and it updates the draw for you. So this is something that's used quite a lot if you want to, as well as having your complex, you might want to sort of decide where you're going to move things and move them around and see how it actually fits. Um, we've got, we also have an area here what's it's called unallocated. So for one of our teams, or two of our teams playing, they're actually not currently allocated to a court. And they sit at the top in this area called unallocated. This is kind of an area that also can be quite useful to use when you are deciding where you're going to be moving teams around, because you can just pop them back up into the unallocated area and then drag and, and drop them around to where you actually want to move them. And it'll update the draw for you. So that's just very briefly what the, the venue view is. Should we show them what it looks like to move a, um, where a conflict, to, uh, a true conflict exists, where you've got two fixtures at the same time on the same court? So, so, so it is important. Yeah. Right? So if you make a mistake when you're doing this dragging dropping, you'll see that uh, at the moment the team with the orange line around it uh, indicates that there's a, a team conflict. Uh, so it's something you may choose to do something about. But the other box above it has got a red box around it that indicates that there is a conflict on the draw. You absolutely should do something about this because you've scheduled two games that require a full size court to the same court at the same time. So again, it's a visual indicator that's something's not right and when it's read it means you should do something about it. Um, you can print your venue view so this is something that's often done is printing the venue view out um, depending on the size of your venue view that you're going to be printing as well uh, depends sort of how it prints but this is useful to to print out it may just email it to you. So you will see um, when you're <clears throat> generating, um, say, a future ferns drawer, um, we will automatically assign two half court fixtures to a single court, uh, and they won't be generated as showing a conflict because you're able to fit those two games on a single court. Um, so I've just covered the phase settings, which I actually probably should have covered at the beginning as well, is that when we first go and create a competition, we come into our phase settings here. Um, it's called phase one. You can rename it. So this, this could be your um, grading. Your, your grading. Um, in this case, it's pulling in my grade defaults. So it could be for your grading, though, that you're not actually you're not actually playing to this extent. Well, presumably for your grading, often not. So this is where you can go and change it. So it always the phase always pulls in your defaults, but you can actually go and change what that is. And it pulls in your um, all your other defaults that are setting here. The key thing that you want to come in here is you want to come in and select the dates. So you will always come into your phase settings and come and select what your dates are. This is just a date picker and you can just go and add your dates from here. So it does make it easy where you can potentially go and um, click a number on like that, adding them at any one stage. To appear in there. Um, individual time well, is uh, another option that's not currently available in your organization settings. So, right. Yeah. So this last column here, the draw type, uh, um, that is not something that I, I don't believe is set in your grade defaults. Uh, um, and this is to determine the way in which we generate the draw. So most of the times you're going to leave that um, on the default selection, which is automated. Uh, however, you do have a greater functionality to be able to generate whatever type of draw you want. So as an example, 
example, if you just want to generate a blank draw and you've already got a draw drawn up in an Excel spreadsheet, you know exactly who you want to be playing each other. You can say, generate a blank draw, let me manually add in who's going to play who each game for each week. Or alternatively, you can generate a matrix draw. Um, say if you're already using a template draw where team one in round one plays team four, team two plays rounds. Um, place um, the seeded team seven, etc. So you may have a predefined um, format for your draw that you have to go, um, that you have to meet. To, um, you can use this matrix draw to automatically generate a draw based on predefined um, settings. So all of that is explained in the support articles that Joe referred to earlier. Um, support at sportsground.com. Um, Actually, sorry, I should have saved that just to show you. You can see how that's added there. So to add, add, if I add my next phase, um, it automatically adds it as phase two. I would come in here, pick my dates, and would add it as well. Um, so we can also within this section here, if we're adding an, a, an additional phase up the top uh, um, next to the phase name, we have the phase type, which at the moment defaults to round robin. But we can state that actually our second, um, our phase two uh, is going to be a crossover phase uh, where we take, you know, the team that's, um, you know, wins pool A, we want, you know, the top four teams from pool A to cross over and play the top four teams from, cool B, from pool B here. Um, you could have a playoff phase and you can link those to a previous phase. So you can pull in the standings table from a previously played phase to generate a draw or generate seedings for the next phase that you're coming into as well. So again, a lot of additional functionality for um, already predefined circumstances and draws that you may have in mind. Um, and so I'm just going to go through to the next section. So this area here is where we have our comp builder, where we would start off coming in here and seeing all of our teams appearing um, on the left hand side. We would go into our phase settings and determine what our phase settings are for this. And we would then go and um, either we could either drag and drop our teams across into here or go and click to um, put our drawer into here and then generate it. If I just go and click onto this, this shows me onto here, clicking into it, and it shows me a view of my different rounds. Remember, I had five dates that were um, selected for this phase, and it's showing me what those, how, how they appear in here. Um, I can um, edit this. And just give me a warning. I can go and um, go and make some changes to here. What would be some examples of um, changes that would be typically made in here? Pulling a team out. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, uh, as an example, if you've already created a draw um, and you need to replace a team, so maybe you might have one team that is pulled out, uh, you can remove the whole draw from the from the calendar, um, uh, choose to save it when it's not added to, to the calendar, and then you can drag and drop the team out of the pool, and that will replace any fixtures that that team was scheduled for with a buy round. To, um, as an example, you may have um, you know completed two rounds of grading, and you found that one team is smashing it in the level above, beating the other teams by 30, 30 points a game, um, whereas one of the teams in this pool is losing by 30 points a game. So you may decide really early on in your grading round, you know, the first weekend that you already know you're going to swap these two teams. So, so in that instance, you would remove the draw from the calendar, drag the team out that needs to go down to the next grade to drag the other team in from the other grade and they will just simply slot into each other's slots where the last team sat, um, previously sat into. Um, also within this view, um, there are a bunch of other functionality here. Um, you see a little pencil icon next to the menu. You can edit an individual fixture without taking the whole draw off the calendar. So you can state for a specific game, actually this team's called in that they're going to play a Wednesday night game. So you can just update the date specifically for this fixture, update the time or the venue for this fixture. Um, these actions can also be taken of updating the time and venue in the venue view, but you must update the date through this competition builder menu. 
You can also add additional rounds on the fly. So although Jo had said she wanted five dates to her calendar, here we can add additional rounds if we need to just on the fly without needing to go in and add additional dates. And, um, so it just gives um, further information, I guess. Sorry. I'm just going to pop through to the... Think about it. Like that. Yes, I think. Some changes. Yeah, it is expecting that there were changes made to um to that draw. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what it's attempting to do now is it's attempting to re-load all of the data that's currently on the screen. Um, so anything in our schedule, our venue view, and our grading view looks like. Might be a bit um, so one of the things I was actually just going to cover as well is while we have our online support area as well, for, um, for SCED, we also use an um, online system you may be familiar called um, Trello, and we have a SCED Trello board that we um, set up, and we invite SCED users to have access to the SCED Trello board. And that's an area for us to... Um, post any notifications of things that we might be aware of if there's an issue that's happened and it, it just gives you an information area that you can go to to go and check if you go into SCED and think oh I've gone to do something that's not working how I expected you can check the SCED Trello, our SCED Trello board to see if there's something that we're aware of um, that you might know. Um, we're operating in our demo server environment as well, which is a little bit brand new. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to generate it. Yeah. Um, I didn't make any changes to that. Uh, we do have a conflict in here. So, okay, so there's one. Great. So um, what you're seeing on the screen here is uh, um, SCED is inbuilt to uh, try and prevent you from uh, creating a draw that's going to, um, to going to cause issues. Uh, um, so here it will automatically let you know if you've tried to attempt to uh, assign a fixture to a court that's already booked uh, or you've assigned um, one team twice in a draw. You may, um, next to each team name, you can see there's a drop down list of all of the teams. If you go to East Netball Premier to the drop down, you can manually re factor the draw as much as you want after it's been automatically generated. So if you've gone in here and made a lot of changes, um, SCED will automatically pick up if you've left a team out of the draw or you've added a team into the draw twice uh, um, or done something like that. Uh, so at the moment, it's telling us your draw contains clashes. It's telling us to have more information. If we hover over it, um, just hover over it again, um, it says that the venue is already booked. So it's telling us it's, it's part of this competition. Um, and it's in the grading phase and it's in the grade premium woman. So that's the grade that we're looking at here. And as Joe is showing you there, um, we've actually got two fixtures scheduled for 1.30 on ABC3. So we either need to change the court or we need to change the time. If you don't know where you want the game to be put yet, you can assign it to unallocated. Or what we do tell kind of um, our super users on SCED is you can have another tab of SCED open on your, um, in another, if you have two browsers, uh, um, and you can have your venue view open in another screen. So while you're building your draw for each particular pool, for each particular grade, you can see at a high level, all of the grades are assignments so that you can say, okay, I can see ABC4 is free at this time, I'm gonna use that one. So you can make the decision um, in the way that best suits you. So in this case, I might just go and change the, Not that they have to say, but saying that uh, then you just blacked out. Oh, that's the I'm gonna pop it as unallocated. So the first thing is and yeah, I think I'm gonna yeah. 
So now that's effectively locked our drawer in, um, and if we close this drawer mode over, um, we can see here that it says now add it to, with a red exclamation mark. So the red exclamation mark identifies to you that your drawer has been added to the calendar, but there's something that you've done in the drawer that means the drawer is not yet complete. Um, and in this instance, we just added um, a fixture to the calendar that was unallocated to um, so there's a gain there that even though we've assigned the fixture, we don't know where we're going to put it yet. And so because it doesn't know what court it's on yet, your drawer is not yet complete. So this is, again, another visual indicator that there's something more for you to do in this drawer before you're going to be happy with it. Once we've moved all of these fixtures off the unallocated view um, and put them onto a court where they should be playing, that added exclamation mark will turn into an added tick. And there's another one still up there. And it's likely that there's probably other ones if we open up that modal uh, again. Uh, um, and if we scroll down, uh, um, I would expect there's games unallocated. We might, it'll be because the page hasn't refreshed yet. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to go, um, we've added it to our calendar and I'm going to go through into the draws and results tab. So this is an area when you first come into here, um, once again, you can decide whether you want to display all of your grades and you've got a date picker and time picker is what you want to show in here. Um, there's some, so when you first come into here, there's some areas that we want to have a look at and it's these, we have some settings here that you can actually turn on and off by default. So typically when you would, would come in here, your drawer would not be published um, and you can decide what that means is that when you go and display your drawers widget on your website, when it's set to be published, people will see it um, in advance. What some um, centres might do is you might have your draw actually done for the five rounds, but not published right the way out. So if I just go and bring myself out a couple more dates. So in this example here, where we've got, we might have them set to be published for the third, but for the 10th, we might set them to be unpublished. By simply clicking on them, I've, I've unpublished them like that, but there is also the ability to go and bulk edit and actually um, change whether you want per grade and whether you want them unpublished or not. So it's just showing that setting there. Um, one of the questions that was raised last night was um, allocating umpires or, um, and how you do that. And this is this area that we have over here. So in this example here, we had added Anne Brown who was registered as one of our umpires. So each centre has um, an umpire registration form that your umpires will register on. And when they do, they will be visible to you in here that you can go and pick your umpire from um, your umpire list and go and add them and they'll appear as an official here. Um, where that is displayed is if I just now go and click through to our, our website part of it, is I've got our draws and results. So this is what we're looking at. With, this is our draw that we've got published. And you can see down here, it's got Anne Brown as the umpire. So that's where your umpires actually appear um, when you're looking at your website, um, front facing in here. And so um, at the in the public facing area, so as Joe mentioned, we had the, the option to publish a fixture. We also had the option to publish a venue, um, publish an umpire. So here, we have shown that we want to publish our umpires. We want to make them publicly visible. If we go to the export um, field there, we can choose to select to export this uh, draw by official. So if you were Anne Brown and you generate an export of the drawer, it would show you all of the fixtures that you have been assigned to, uh, all listed under your own individual name. So you get a snapshot uh, of the specific games that you're assigned to as an official. Um, I um, wish um, it's, it's going to um, that should to break refresh. the cache. That should break the cache. You will need to refresh the page, um, the the public page. You will need to refresh. 
timing. So by ticking in SCED and unticking that I want my um, officials displayed, it automatically displays here. So once your SCED widget, once your draws widget is displayed on your website, you can kind of set and forget it because anything that you do in the back end of SCED for your drawer will automatically be updated. So if you're working in here and you had these um, unpublished and you just go and tick to publish them, you don't need, need to go and tell anyone, it's automatically updated on your website. And so the whole, the, the whole thing then is people don't need to contact you, you can just say it's on your website. So in this Draws and Results tab, um, if you are not using the game day scoring app, so for those centres who are not using the game day scoring app using the traditional cards, there's a couple of things. So one is from here, and I think this is a question last night, if you're wanting to print scorecards, you can click into here and it sets it up in a template here based on what I had filtered on in my view here. So this lets you go and print out on a, um, for your sticky labels, for your scored cards, that automatically pulls in there. So the details of the labels um, and what labels that can be generated, these sticky labels, um, is in at support.sportsground.com, just type in scorecards. Um, so, and if you are manually going in and entering your results, it is simply you've you've been given your card, we're in the draws and results tab, and you can come in and manually go and enter your results in here. It's as quick as that. Six. Um, then equally, if I went to go back and refresh and have a look at my website. you can see it's automatically populated my drawers in here. So this is kind of the, the old school way if you're using team cards and going and manually adding your drawers and results through here. So it is done within this um, drawers and results tab. So other things that um, can be generated from here is you can um, manually go and change your statuses so as a, for example, if someone um, defaulted, you can put in who defaulted, whether they won, won by default, if it's um, cancelled or it's changed. Um, so I'm just going to go and insert, um, add in, cancelled in there. You also have the ability to enter public notes. So a public note that might appear in the drawer. So I'm just going to go and type in here. You can see it's, it gives you a prompt here. Here are my public notes. Here I can type anything. Um, another great example. And I can um, color, bold it, color it, do um, have different settings in here as to how I might want to make it look. Yeah. Say. Yeah. Um, when I'm then looking at my drawer, I can see I've got a little public note. And once again, if I go and refresh it from here, it comes through, you can see my public note appears in there. So you've got the ability to go and make those changes to your drawer there as well. Um, so we showed you how you can um, use the scorecards. You can export um, from here as well. So depending on what I've filtered on, in this case, I've filtered on both grades, I can export. And there's lots of different configurations of what you want to export. So in this case, all fixtures or just unpublished fixtures, um, all conflicts, whether I want it grouped by time, grade, venue, um, at, at officials, um, status of it. So I might just want to um, export my cancelled ones and also what format that you want it in, PDF or CSV. So whether you want to have a look at manipulating it. Um, TXT was typically used for when the drawers were sent to the paper, so it's probably a bit more old school that that's still there um, because that's not commonly used. So you've got some different levels of flexibility of what you want to um, export from here. Bulk edit we just covered before, which lets you actually go and change um, a whole lot of things that you want to. So in this case, I might click, I'm going to publish all officials, and you'll see that my official um, automatically is published in there as well. Um, game events report and push alerts relates to using the game day scoring app. So when you are using the game day scoring app, um, your results are automatically 
applied to this draws and results area. So I'm just going to show you an example of how that can look. I have a competition I prepared earlier. So this is just showing an example of a competition that has scores automatically added. So these scores were added by the score being scored in the game day app. The other thing that you can notice here is these teams are underlined. Well, most of these teams are underlined. And in some cases, the teams are underlined in blue. So what that is showing is when the game day app is used and when the team sheet is submitted, so who's going to be um, playing, um, and when they submit the score, it shows that the team is an underline. So I'm just going to open up a couple of these so we can actually see how they look. So in SCED, I'm the SCED administrator, I just clicked on it. And this is how it looks in the team sheet. So this is actually showing a submitted team sheet. It shows who submitted it, what date and what time. And this was submitted by being scored in the game day app. So these were all players. So these players got here because these players were added, were registered with a club. With that club, they were added to that club's team builder. In team builder, they were selected in the app. And then in the app, they were scored in the app. And this is actually quite a great example as they've actually um, used substitution. So you can see when they've taken um, people on and off. And it also shows who the scorers were and what they scored their goals and misses. This is just um, a pictorial showing your more traditional card. And it shows you um, where the quarters were and the final result. So here is a view of scared where the results have been entered by a game day scoring app and it, it automatically populates results in here. Even though they've been scored by someone using the app, you as the scared administrator have the ability to overwrite any of these scores. So there may be an instance where there's conflicted scores, you have the power to overwrite that. You can also come in here and actually edit um, who, the, who scored what. So you, even though this has been already submitted and scored, as the SCED administrator, you can actually edit it. Um, the difference between the um, teams being shown there in blue and some that are shown there in black is the ones that are shown in blue have a comment added. So one of the things when um, the game day app, um, when you submit the score in the game day app, you can actually submit a comment. How cool is that? Umpires were amazing. And often the comments that you see submitted are really neat things like that um, as well. But that's just a visual indicator to show you as a SCED administrator someone submitted a comment. So the only people that can see comments are yourselves as the SCED administrator, and this is the only view um, that you see them in. So the comments um, that people submit in the app are specifically designed for, for you to view. Yeah, that's actually really important. So while this team submitted a comment, their opposing team won't ever see that comment. So just to send it. And the, the opposing team is not underlined because the opposing team never submitted a team sheet to... Um, uh, and so I think they mentioned that. There we go. They had no scorer. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. so you um so if, if you have um requirements for um team sheets to be submitted as an example in your lower grades, this is a way that you can um understand to, um whether or not they have based on whether or not the team name is un underlined. Right. So coming back to just show you some of the other things, I'll just pop back into my version here. It doesn't matter that these um, aren't underlined. But other things that you can do from this view here, I've filtered on a date and time range, and I've filtered on um, grades. Once I've got my filtered view, um, filtered view, I can then do my exporting or my editing um, scorecards. But I actually want to talk about push alerts because this is something that is actually really neat with the game day app as well, is that you can send push alerts. So as a, for example, where this is used is um, and we're flicking into the game day app um, a little bit, is where centres are wanting, they, they come into here into SCED and we're just, the games might be happening this morning and they see that these teams aren't underlined. So those teams being underlined means that the teams haven't submitted their team sheets. So in the app, the um, coach or manager, they submit their team sheet before the game starts because then that you can see who's playing in what team. So an example of using a push alert is 
the SCED administrator could come in here and they could send a push alert to everyone who's a team admin or a team scorer and say, hey, you guys haven't submitted your team sheets, a reminder to submit your team sheet. You can also send push alerts for a whole lot of things. It could be that games are being cancelled um, or there's changes or courts being moved or whatever you want to send a push alert for. But that's one of the really neat things about using the Game Day app is you can communicate directly to your um, players and um, your teams and your scorers through using push alerts in here. So Gavin just had a good question in relation to the game day app, which he thought probably would be easier to talk to. Yeah. Um, his question was, so does everyone from each team keep score on the app or is someone allocated to take score? Yeah. Brilliant. What we might do is we might flick into the, we might start going through the game day app. Just before we do, I'll just quickly go into this last area here, which is the standings table. Um, which shows you the summary of what's what's happened. And then we'll answer that question when we go into the game day app. So all of this is based on these points, the, the for and against, the differentials and everything in here is based on the um, defaults that were set up for this grade, for this competition that's being run. You can do some manual adjustments. You can add some public notes in here. You can actually do some changing of some ranking as well. There's certain modifications that you can do in here. So as an example, if a team played an unregistered player um, and you had written into your constitution that teams that play unregistered players are deducted two points on their standing table, where you could input a minus two into the manual adjustment com com column and, and enter a public note to team deducted two points for the um, uh, playing an unregistered player so you can um, manually modify that standings table as you see fit to, um, and as Joe mentioned you can also manually sort and rank teams if you have uh, um, different adjustments for so I know some people have you know really um, specific requirements for an example where teams are tied on points and for and against differentials you might look back to the previous games that they played against each other and rank the team that um, had won both of those games higher than the other one so if you have um, you know really specific logic about teams that are tied um, you can manually rank teams and standings tables according to those requirements so I'm just going to go back once again into our, our draws widget. So in our draws widget, when we go and add our draws widget, we kind of super quickly touched on this last night. We went in here because we wanted to change the color and how this actually draws widget looked as well. But the draws widget lets you do some other things. I can see it's got three tabs here. Um, draws always looks forward, results always looks back a week, and standings just shows the standings for there for what you're in. You can actually set this that you don't display the results or the standings, or you can configure that you only actually use the draws widget to display the, um, the results. So that is all in this area here. So you can see in this case, I'm going to say I'm not going to display my draws, uh, my results, my standings, click save, and those two tabs disappear. So there's a whole lot of things that you can do with what you want to display, how you want it to look, and how you want it to configure within your draws widget and how it displays on your website. You could have multiple draws widgets. You can have one that just displays your draws and one that just displays your results or different competitions. There's all sorts of ways that you can configure it. So where we were, where we started, is we started in our comp builder. We came into SCED. Um, our organisation settings were already set up. We added our competition. We added some closing dates. Our teams were added. Our draw, draw was generated. That all happened in Comp Builder. Once that's done, we are coming to our draws and results area. Decide where we're adding our um, officials, what we're publishing, what we're not publishing, and making it vis visible. And then that's kind of set and forget until the games happen. As the games are happening, if they're being scored using um, traditional paper cards, um, as the, they would be, the results would be manually added in here, that automatically updates the widget on the website. And if they're being scored in the game day app, that's what we're going to go into next to show how they would appear in here. So I'm going to go out of um, trusty ABC people and go to the my netball manager page. And this has some information in relation to the Game Day app. The Game Day app um, will be something that will um, run through and have training, particularly in relation to your scorers, closer to the beginning of the season and how they actually get set up 
and how they gain access. I'm going to open up this user guide. Uh, we've got video tutorials that you can watch, and they're only a couple of minutes long, but it shows how you gain um, scorer access, how you select a team, and how you score a game. They're really awesome. Watch them as often as you like. As each team is created by the club or school in Team Builder, as they add their team, their team gets a scorer code. So I'm going to... So the starting point is Maris Netball in here. They can see and they can export their, um, their score, score codes in here. Every single one of these teams has a unique six letter score code. So if your team changes from this year to next year, it will get a new score code. This is the method for giving your scorers access to score the game. So anybody can be a scorer. Um, so as an example, you might have your coach um, might register um, to the game day app as a scorer um, and input your score code so they can become a scorer. You might have your manager do so. You might have your captain do so. You might have everyone in your team um, do so. It, it really just is determined on how you're wanting to manage it. But what we do recommend is typically, you know, like the captain has got a score code and is logged in on their device. They take their device along with them to Nepal and they just pass it to their mum standing on the sideline or um, whoever suits that role best. So there's some decisions that you want to make as a centre is how you want to run the game day app side of things. So essentially, anyone who's going to be scoring a game or any, any coaches or managers who's going to be submitting a team sheet will be downloading the My Netball Manager app. You can actually go and download the My Netball Manager app now. Um, you won't really be able to do anything um, because you're not going to have any, any teams allocated or anything like that to you, but anyone can go down and download the My Netball Manager app. Then the starting point is um, what they would typically say is you can register as a user. If you actually already have a sporty username and password, doesn't matter what you're using sporty for, you actually can log in. Once again, you won't be able to, you won't be able to see anything until you actually add your scorer code, but new scorers can simply um, register. They enter their details and then they're logged into the app. And this comes up first and this is key. So the club uh, will go say to their members, you know, if you're going to be a scorer, this is a scorer code for a, this team and this is a scorer code for that team. As a centre, you can actually run a report and you can see across all of your clubs and schools these scorer codes. So this is something as part of the setup at the beginning of the season, we'd say run that, leave it in, in the control room because if someone sort of comes up to you say, hey, I'm scoring for Maris Netball A, we don't know our scorer code, what is it? You as a centre can give them access to score like that. But coming back to the question of do you score and how you score and for both teams, that's kind of a decision that you want to make at a centre. So typically how it works is um, we have two, yeah, we'll do the alarm. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, um, closing up for the night. Um, typically how it works is um, there'll be team A, team B, there's two scorers, both scoring, both teams um, in the app. So team A will be standing beside team B, they've both got their phones and they're scoring both teams. That's typically how it works. In the example that we showed before where one of the teams didn't score, it didn't matter, one team can score both games, um, both teams scoring both games. This is, this is explained in the user guide here. So one, you can have a look at the videos, but you can also have a look at um, download this as well. So what happens with the game day app is when you uh, um, get access to your team, you've entered your scorer code, you will then come into the app and you will see all of the games for your team that are published. So back in SCED, in the um, draws and results area, if you don't, need, uh, as a SCED administrator, if you only publish one week, um, they would only see one week. If you publish the entire five weeks, the scorer can come in here and they can click through this and um, they can actually go and see all of their upcoming teams. 
just like they could go and see that if they could go and see that in the draw. So the starting point is as your scorers gain access, um, they come in and they see their upcoming games. Um, you can, this is showing, um, explaining here, you can be a scorer for multiple teams, and that is actually quite common. So you might have your, um, particularly for schools, you might have the school sports coordinator that's responsible for that school. They might have scorer access for all of the teams, as you can see them upcoming, or you might have scorer, scorer for a couple of teams. You can simply just click through here and you can see who and what you have scores for. You can also click back and see any of your results that have actually been entered. So if any of you do something like the New Zealand app or whatever, you can flip through and see your upcoming flights. You can flip through and see your upcoming games. So starting point is um, you will go and get your score access. It will load and display um, any of your upcoming games. Just going down. And when it does, it shows you all of the defaults that are set in SCED. So it shows you what competition you're in, what grade you're in, who you're playing, where you're playing, your location, and all of that is driven from SCED. If you go and update in SCED, a time or a venue, it automatically updates in the app. A little bit hard to see here, but down the bottom, this is showing me the time, this is showing me um, my venue and my court, showing me my competition and who I'm playing, the date that I'm playing. Um, so the starting point is we are on game day and first thing that we want to do is we want to go and select our team to score, uh, select out our squad who's going to be playing. So you might do this the night before, um, you might do it just before the game, um, you can do it either time, but what it does is when you come in to select your team, it shows you your players. So these are the players that have been added to that team and team builder for that club. So it lets you go and by default, they're all ticked on. You can tap off if you might have some players that aren't playing. You can also go through and pick players from another squad. So what this does is it lets you go and see your other teams that are part of your club or school, and you can go and pull a player up from another team to play in that game day with you. So this is what this um, view is showing as well. And this is all, this is explained in the um, video part of it. Um, when you watch the video, it shows you how you can do that. So please um, have a look through these videos. Once you've actually picked your squad, you can then go and set your starting positions. So in this case, you can either tap on a player or swipe on a player and come through and set their positions. It lets you choose um, their position. Once that position has been chosen, you can't then select another one. So it's got some little foolproof things built in like that. And then once you've picked your starting players, um, you can submit your team sheet. So your next thing is then you've submitted your team sheet. So here it is, it's showing me who all my players are. And you get this neat little view of how your team sheet can look. So um, once you've submitted your team sheet, in the app, your opposing team can actually go and click and see who your players are. So what I'm meaning by that is I'm with the Mavericks. Uh, once the um, team, once the Mavens have selected their team sheet, I can go and click on their name and I can go and see their players and vice versa. So you can both see who's in each team. So that um, gives you that visibility. So you may determine when you actually want to go and submit your team sheet. Um, we then, that's all that happens before the game. We then at the game, we've got our two sto scorers. They're logged, they're both logged into the app and they then go point toss. Um, which team has got the centre pass. So what you do is you actually can add that into here. And when you know who's got the centre pass, that what that does is the app automatically tracks odds and evens. So it automatically does it for you. A little pop-up comes up each time the goal is scored to tell you who's then got the centre pass. You can turn that off if you don't want to see it, but it's, it's kind of designed to make it idiot-proof. It just um, tells you who's got the odds and evens. We've picked who's got the centre toss, if you actually make a mistake, you can actually change who's got the centre toss at the beginning. And we're here and we're ready to start the game. So to start scoring, you click start. 
Now, often the the start of the game, depending on where your player playing, but most centres will use the hooter, and the hooter is the start of the game. There is a little timer that um, runs through here when the game is actually running. Um, that's just to give you a visual indicator of what the time is happening, but most centres control that time by the hooter controlling, starting, stopping the game. And the, sorry, the red force. And the red force, yeah. So the time of these quarters here is once again driven from skid. So if you're scoring your grading games, remember in, in the phase settings of our grading, we could go and change the default, how many quarters and how long each quarter is. Once we change that, that automatically feeds through into here. So it's all, it's all fed into skid here. Start the game, and then as you're going through the game, you can then tap on goal shoot, whether they the goals and the misses through here, and it builds you a timeline. As each game is scored, it tells you who's then got the center pass based on who scored the game. And you'll start to have this timeline that's built. And remember, you're scoring for both teams. You're not just scoring for the Mavericks, you're scoring for both teams as you're coming through. Um, so we're going along in here. There is um, the app is actually clever, and what it does is it checks what both team scorers are doing. So I'm scoring my team, Sarah's scoring her team, and we're both scoring. Um, if um, I score a goal, and within it has a 10 second check, Sarah doesn't score a goal, the app will display in red, and it will display a conflict. Got a screenshot of it, um, but that is actually covered in the scoring side of it. And that's to indicate that our um, scoring is out of sync. And Sarah might go, oh, whoops, yep, I need to hurry up and add my score. Um, if you have that conflict and you get to the end of the quarter, you can generally look back and you can go and add to bring your score um, up to speed of the other ones. Conflict in scores doesn't happen very often. While it's mentioned in here and it's covered in the, in the app side of it, um, so just to let you know, it typically doesn't happen that often, but you can amend it if you, you need to. So we come into the end of the quarter, and at the end of the quarter, um, we hit pause. We have a pop-up as to whether or not the ball is in play, to so find out at the beginning of the next quarter who's got sent pass. We click that, and our quarter has um, ended, and it's showing me that we're the end of the quarter, and the next thing that we are is in quarter two. Now, at the end of the quarter, you can go and change and do substitutes. So when you're rolling out the game day app, um, and particularly for, for new centres, um, different centres decide how they're actually going to want to roll it out. And this is something that you can have on your own website as to how much you're wanting people to use the app. Um, so you may say, hey, we don't care about you doing substitutions or we only want you to do substitutions for our prem games, don't worry about our junior games. Or in some cases, um, some seem to say, we don't even need you to submit a team sheet, we just simply want you to score the game. So it's, it's all kind of a decision that you want to make at your centre as to how you actually want to use the game day app. The more information that is plugged into the game day app, the more you get out. So if you are um, submitting team sheets and recording who's playing and in what position, and then you're tracking substitutions, at the end of it, you get a, game, a good game day report. And if I click back into that example where, where it is here, this is where they were using substitutions. They can now see who's played for how long, how, who got what goals, because they're tracking it all in the game day app. For some of your scorers and some of your members, this just might be overwhelming initially. That, that's okay. You, you know, that's your own decision that you have to make at your centre as to how you want it to run. But the app gives you the ability to do that. That's right. And so not only does it give the, the club's ability to access that data um, through Team Builder, um, they can generate reports through Team Builder on you know, team sheets, um, statistics, et cetera. You also have access to that full data within Skid um, as game reports. Uh, so you have an option there to generate game reports for a specific grade, a period of time, for a specific phase, for the whole competition, et cetera. And that will give you your breakdown of you know, who your top point score is for a specific grade, how many games each person has played, how many minutes each person in each grade has played um, to determine if they're eligible for finals and things like that. 
So the output of that is you get us as a CSV file, so an Excel file. So that's your generating of your game reports. Actually, each one of the clubs, um, they can also export their game reports the way they access it is, and where they go into Team Builder. I think I might have got open. Yep. So Team Builder for my club. I've got an area here called Game Reports. So it's not as detailed um, week by week. It's a total game reports, but that lets them have their own game report area as well. So we're at the end of the first quarter. Um, we're coming into here. Uh, this is where you can go and edit the timeline. So I mentioned, say, say Sarah and I got out of sync and Sarah's score was slightly changed. She, we could come, you could come back in and edit it by tapping on um, the event and going and either editing it, deleting it, things like that. Yeah. Substitutions. So at the end of the quarter, you can then go and do your substitutions. And so in this case, we can do our substitutions and we can apply it. When you then go into your next quarter, it will show you who has been substituted. Um, you, you only see the actual names of who's been substituted and the names of your scorers on your side. You don't see that of your opposing team. You just see yours here. So we're at the beginning of the second quarter and we start the game on the second quarter and away we go um, again until we get to super quickly. We've just now got to the end of the game. We've got to our, uh, our final um, quarter. We um, hit where it says um, we will pause and submit the final score. That's uh, covered a bit better in the videos. And then it comes up here. This is what it shows, and this is this comment area. So remember we showed you back up in this team sheet area, there's a comment that gets added. That's because in this case, they added that comment in here. So once again, that's not available for the opposing team. It's only the SCED administrator and you that see that. And that's it. You've scored the game. It's gone and updated the um, uh, SCED. As a skilled administrator, you could go in and amend it if you needed to, but you've, you've um, scored the game and you can then go and view your team. You've got a PDF of what your team is. So back in there. Oh, that was actually. So you can do things like remove a player that didn't play on the court, the skilled administrator. So say you actually submitted someone on your team sheet and they never actually turned up. You have the ability, but also you typically go through to the um, skilled administrator. They can remove that person um, from the team so they don't get picked up in eligibility reporting as well. Um, this is just showing some settings of how you can do with that. So there's final score, got all that covered. Um, your team sheet. And then this is showing when the score has been um, entered. So there's some things that the app does as well as you know how you can you might have some upcoming games if you happen to be on an upcoming game and you go and try and score that game you get a warning so it's designed to stop you doing things like scoring games before you actually need to um, oh this is a useful area here and app connectivity so the app can be run fully offline um, what you do need to do, first of all, is you need to um, submit your team sheet. So while you're using data or Wi-Fi, you submit your team sheet. You can then turn up at the game and score the game fully offline. So you can record who scored what and all recorded in the app. When you then get back into Wi-Fi or back using, um, you want to turn on your data, um, it will then upload to the draw then. If the app identifies that you're in an area that has the Wi-Fi is not great, you will have it will come up and you will get a message that appears on here that you've got poor connectivity. Um, you can still keep doing all the things that you're doing in the app, and it will only upload and update it when you're back in um, connectivity. So what I might do is I might um, I know there's been lots of chat going on as well, but We've kind of given you a, a, a run through of the ski part of it and also the game day app. I'm conscious of the time, but I just want to open it up to see if there's any specific questions that you want to discuss so that anyone else can hear them. Um, maybe particularly more in relation to the game day app um, or, or ski or anything that we've covered. So, would anyone like to ask any questions? <laughs> Mm 
I, I have a question, Jo. All right. Uh, hi. Hi. So, um, when you were, uh, I was doing this last week, um, I've got five teams in a grade. And so, of course, I'm going to get two games in there. But I want the fifth team to have a game, which obviously means it's going to be on the second round. Could I put those three games, even though one of them is going to be in a different time, in the same group? I'm not sure I understand the question completely, but uh, um, when you're generating a draw in SCED, it's if each round is looking for a complete round, right? Where each team is playing. Yeah. So, um, so what you can do is you can generate by yourself. You can um, generate incomplete rounds, or you can delete a fixture from a round and then add a, a team to have a double header fixture in the next round. Um, is that what you're? Yeah, yeah, kind of. So, like, um, one versus two, three versus four, five would be a buy, right? Mm -hmm. So, if I change the buy to one. And just change the time it'll stay in to the next round it'll stay in that group correct but that's not but that's not allowed why can you just tell me why each each round is is it each each round is, is a round, right? Where each team plays once. So what I would suggest there is you actually generate a new round uh, specifically with that fixture. Um uh, or alternatively have uh, played the I guess the 5v1 game, which should be scheduled for round two. But you can just change the date of that game. So okay, it happens on the date of round one, but it's still captured within the round two. Uh, Okay, so thank you for that. Um, so, um, so the buy, if we bought, um, uh, let's just say I had a six team there and they decided to to leave. Um, so I, that's why I'm left with five with the buy. And then another team came along. Can I just put them straight in there? And yeah, then that's right. So we can show you how that looks if you like. Yeah. And I think like if, there, if you've got quite specific examples like this, what we can, you know, we can maybe look at helping you as well, sort of um, for those specific examples. Yeah, I just try to try to do it myself and by deleting the, the name of the team or that's what I think I asked Karen this question. Do you delete the team and then put another team in and it'll automatically go into that? Yeah, that's right. That yeah, so if we go to generate this draw here, we can see it's currently a five team draw. We're just going to add it to the calendar. Um, let's just pop these ones to unallocated for now. So we've now added our draw to the calendar, but now we've realized that Maris test one has actually come in and I've decided they want to enter our draw. So I'm going to edit our draw and I'm going to edit, take my dates right back um, to prior to when the first round is being played. It's going to remove the whole draw from the calendar now. So I'm just going to close that modal. I'm now going to drag and drop this Maris team one into my pool and click generate drawer. And that's just going to plop that Maris team one, test one, into all of the spots where I previously had a buy. Oh, so I don't have to change anything else. I just put it, slot it back in there. That's correct. Yep. And so the same thing works vice versa. We've currently got a 16 drawer. Um, we, we might have even played the first round as an example. So we, we might say we may want to go to edit this drawer that we're going to set the date for the ninth because we've already played the round on the third. So that's going to remove all of the fixtures from the, the okay. ninth. Okay. So again, I'm just going to save that one and close it. I'm going to move Maris test one out. Click generate drawer again. And we can see here that we're over Maris set before. They've just changed to buys, but we oh, um, right. we still right. have the details, even though it doesn't show in this particular view. If we okay. went to a draw for the third of the 12th, uh, we would still see the result for Eastern Netball versus Marist if we had entered a result for that fixture. So that wouldn't be lost to us. So I think what you're showing um, is there's, there's a lot of flexibility and where there are specific cases like this, 
um, if you're unsure of them, come through okay. to us and we can help you, you know, to, to run through these kind of things. That's a, that's a kind of common thing, a team pulling out one round in or what being added one round in, an example of that. Yeah. And so right there, sorry. Yeah. So right there, can you click on where the, uh, the line where it says buy, please? Yeah. Yeah, can you click on there? So like, um, so right there, I've got one, two, three, four, and um, I want to, I want number four to play in replace of buy, but at a different round. Couldn't I just change it there? No, because what we're looking for here in a round is for each team to play once. So it's going to indicate there's something wrong with your round if you're having a team playing more than once. So, okay. so what I would suggest you do uh, um, in that instance is uh, um, you can choose to uh, um, either a to delete the buy completely. Okay. And then you can change uh, the date of the game that you wanted to instead have on that date. To, so even though it's actually part of round three, that particular game that's scheduled for round three can, can okay. still belong to round three, but it can be played on the same date as your round two fixtures. Thank you, Sarah. No problem. Um, so there are lots of complex kind of, as Joe mentioned, specific scenarios that, that um, uh, Karen is really comfortable with going through with you. So things like um, where you have two pools that uh, um, have uneven numbers of team and you want a friendly game between the two different pools. So we can manage that. To, um, there are other different things that can occur, like where you're wanting a friendly game between grades and things. So there are different um, configurations that Karen can help you with for those specific use cases. Um, I just asked one more question. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, just got a couple of other people that are asking um, questions. Oh, yeah. would, you, would you like to um, share? Sure, no, that's okay. Ask a couple of questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, just quickly, for the officials at the moment, is it only umpires or could we have, like, when you register for umpires, then we can have a registration for bench officials? because uh, we run bench officials on our premium and prem reserve games, is, is there the ability to show them and the officials as well, is, or is it just restricted to umpires? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, they would be as registered as, 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 an, as an umpire. Yeah, yeah. so um, if we go into the draws and results here, yeah, um, and, and, and click on the um, and add an official, so here, if you select that drop down, uh, so we do have the option to determine what type of role that person is in. So you can see oh, see this as a bench official, as a standby, um, et cetera. So if they're, um, so you can identify what their role is and you can assign them to that fixture. And then of course, if you are using that game, I won't go, yeah, that bar yet. <laughs> uh, but yes, is the answer. Excellent, okay. That, that's great. And just a quick build on um, what Rose was saying. So we can actually add a game in as a friendly game and it won't go towards any draws and results or anything like that. So that that's, is actually that's, possible. That's right. So um, you can see that there's a show and ladder checkbox. So. Yeah. Um, so if you add a game manually to the calendar, so um, you can add at manual. You can add fixtures to each round or you can add a round entirely and then just manually generate fixtures to that round. By default, they'll be checked off that um, that they're not ticked to show and ladder. Yep. Any game that's checked on to show and ladder effectively means it contributes to standings tables. So, so as long as that's unchecked, uh, um, uh, you can have friendly games published and available, you can assign referees to them, et cetera, and they won't contribute to standings. Awesome. Great, that's excellent. That's all my questions. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Um, Vicky, did you have a, a question? I did. Um, hi, thank you. I it's the same thing with officials. Are you saying that in the future the, the officials will appear in a drop-down box, or do we still have to add them manually? Um, so if you using um SCED last year, they will be they will um come through on the, um, the officials form. So we'll need to, we should run through with you about how those officials should be registered this year. Oh, great. Cause that, that's the hardest thing is 
is just typing it all in. Yeah, yeah. So um, it would do an autocomplete. To, um, so once you've started typing someone's name, it'll bring up. So if you type Anne, it will bring up all of the people that have registered as Anne, and you can select which one that, um, that you want for that specific fixture. Oh, that's awesome. So when will that differentiate? Because I, we do the same. We have um, umpires, but we also have bench officials. Will they be in different groups? Like, because we don't have as many bench officials as umpires will it just select from where they're registered or does it select everybody when you start typing i mean it will select everybody oh well it's yeah that has it select everybody that has registered so your bench officials and your normal um, officials will be registering on the same form and then yeah. you select from there oh cool oh that's awesome <laughs> thank you that was my question Brilliant. Other questions that people would like to ask? Hi, um, my name's Sasha. Um, I just wanted to ask, and I'm really sorry if it's been covered, um, but if there's only one team that has a phone and say the other team doesn't have any subs to score, will that affect um, the way the scoring is done through the app? And also, um, what if like there's no teams with a phone available? Can, they, can we enter the scores manually afterwards? Yeah, fantastic questions. Um, yes, if there's um, only one team that doesn't that doesn't affect the score, that's still because they that one team is scoring for both teams, so they're entering the score for both teams. Um, so that will go and update Sked. If there's no one at all, yes, you can come into Sked and simply manually go and add the result in here. So yeah, great questions. Great, thank you for that. I think what we will do as well is closer to the season is, is definitely have um, game day app um, training. So that's what we did last year with um, centres. We also set it up that um, clubs and schools had a dummy drawer that they could go and practice with. Um, so they have logged into the app before. So it gives them the ability for you to actually go and generate who's playing who and they can just go and score and substitute and do whatever they like but it gets them familiar with using the app. So that's typically something that's done just prior to the, the actual season starting, because once all of your teams are confirmed, so you know who all of your teams are, so that's certainly something that we would do for the centres. Brilliant. Any other kind of um, specific questions that you would like covered tonight? Great. Great. Um, I'm sure there's going to be more things that come up and definitely in relation to um, how you run SCED uh, because there's lots of different scenarios of things that are happening and um, different things that you might want to run, whether it's tournaments and how you can set those up and things as well. So what we will do is we are going to be standing up a page on here um, which is going to have these recordings, but also... Um, maybe some useful um, links to some of these articles here because there's a whole lot of them um, that we've got here, but it could be some things that are that we think would be good for you to start off learning about. Um, we haven't covered things like Match Centre where you can see who's been playing um, and how you use those results and display and things like that. So there's it's, it's kind of like last night going through the website side of it. It is a big complex piece, but there's a lot of things that you can do as well. But we will be here to support you. Excellent. Well, if that's the case, and if you think of anything, remember you can contact our support team and we can, if we've got common questions that come up, we will add them on here as well, so we've common FAQs. Actually, while I'm thinking of FAQs, just particularly in relation to the game day app, here are a whole lot of just our kind of standard ones that we have down here. You know, as for example, my phone died, I need to look in the middle of the game, what do I do? It's raining, what do I do? Um, these kind of standard questions have been answered here as well. Um, and that this is also sort of getting your um, users familiar if you're completely changing everything across to Sporty this year and scoring with a game day app, they wouldn't have done that before. Or however, some of your users might have used them in a rugby capacity or with rugby league, so um, have some kind of familiarity with it. Excellent, lovely. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for attending tonight and giving up your time again. Um, we really appreciate it. And thanks, Sarah, for helping <laughs> with my skewed questions as well. 
Um, and yeah, so we're going to be having these tutorials uploaded or the videos uploaded on the website later on this week. So uh, as I'm saying, good night. Thanks Thank all. you. Appreciate it. So, bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye.